doing well. It's Finnevar here and this is going to be Magical Pumpkins <laughs> live. And I've got my pumpkins ready here. Okay, I can see it on the screen. Yay! Hello, hello. You can give a shout on Facebook, on um, wherever you want to give, that we are starting in a moment. So if you want to invite your friends, you're more than welcome. This is open for everybody. Hello, Stephanie. I'm just checking if the chat is working. Yep. Yeah. It is perfect. I will sit and chat with you for a moment now. Hi, everybody. How are you? <laughs> Hello. It's me in my studio and we are going to start our live show in a moment. So I hope you are ready. It's going to be a little bit of the fun. You can see the size of the pumpkins I've got. So one is really small. Hello, Katya. Hello, Ziggy. And this one is a bit larger. So if everything is going to go according to the plan, I'm going to alter two of these and they're going to be slightly different color, uh, color compositions. I want them to be magical with a bit unusual colors. And we're going to include embellishments. We're going to include waxes, paints. We're going to use some metallic flakes. Just, yay, you know, pumpkins for the Halloween season. So, uh, well, not always, not only Halloween, of course, because October is not just Halloween. It is the beginning of real autumn as well. But, uh, oh, you're going to be painting tombstones with your hubby. That's also kind of good activity to do in October, I guess. <laughs> so welcome to my studio. It's my big pleasure to see you all here. And if it is possible, uh, give a shout in Finnevern Friends Open Studio group that we are starting. Uh, if you are at Create with Prima as well, you can post the link in there. You can post on your wall and you can post if you are one of my patrons in our closed a group and that is my husband and <laughs> Andrew is here just in case if you need some help he's going to help us and he will be able to read the most important comments as well just in case if something is going to be missing okay you know I may not see everything also thumbs up if you can uh, that's going to make the video more visible yeah they say hello Andrew to to, to you now <laughs> And hello, Olga. Hello, hello, my dear. I can see some patrons joining as well. Give a shout in the patron group as well, because uh, we are starting in about three minutes. And uh, in the meantime, I can tell you what I've planned. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's there. He's just not talking too much. He's there in the background, I can tell you. <laughs> so I got some pre-selection of the embellishments. <laughs> And I pre-selected some of the supplies in the basket, so it's going to be easier for me to pick uh, things. And uh, I've got some color ideas as well. And um, if you could see the product list that I uh, posted today on my Instagram account, and it was in the stories, and that was in the post, and that of course went to Facebook as well. I'm planning to use a bit of the shiny stuff, such as glitters, of course. Um, there will be some sequins, there will be some uh, metallic foils. So I would love to make these pumpkins really magical and shiny. And then the selection of the techniques, of course, would work on any other surface as well. So if you don't have a pumpkin, you can easily apply this uh, set of products uh, on the box, on the canvas. It's just inspiration how to use them. But I really hope my pumpkins are going to be magical and I will have really pretty uh, home decor for the season. Hello, Caroline. It's great to see you. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm just wondering how do you say sakins in a pro proper way? In Polish, it's, it's sakine, which is different. It starts with t, like n, different, completely different uh, sound. So I'm trying to imagine. I think it should be longer, like sakins, but <laughs> it is. Yeah, sakins. Does q you? Okay, sakins. Thank you. They're queens. Okay, sakins. <laughs> Sequins. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sequins. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Wins. Okay. <sighs> Sequins. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, see, it's not easy language. I wish it was more uh, easy to guess some of the words. Uh, but in English, from the point of view of somebody whose language is constructed differently, you just have to learn the words by heart because guessing the right pronunciation is not always possible. So what people like me have to do, they just need to memorize all the words and just remember how they are. <laughs> there is no other way because trying to learn, you know, how do we do it in primary school, like when we start learning Polish, our letters have only one version of the sound. So whatever you are reading, <laughs> it all, it's always easy, like there's no problem. There's only some of them which are two together, but then we also know they're always the same way. So it's really confusing if you are learning English. <laughs> so guys, thank you so much for joining. I hope you are going to have <laughs> Nauczyć <laughs> polskiego. Yeah, um, Kasiupaya is suggesting that we should uh, we should t teach somebody Polish tangle tangle twisters. Uh, for example, rozrewolwerowany. <laughs> rozrewolwerowany. It is uh, not working properly. <laughs> rozrewolwerowany kaloryfer. <laughs> so this is the heater which is not working properly because it is. Uh, probably not tight enough, <laughs> and um, it is just to make people confused. <laughs> yeah, so comparing to comparing to some of the words I have to pronounce, this is funny. Hello, hello again. I can see a lot of you ready. So we are going to start with the paper. It's it's paper mache. So it's basically. Uh, background which is ready to alter so you don't really have to make any steps but if you have something that is made from raw wood or glass or um, HDF or MDF I would really start with one coat careless coat of gesso so you have the surface ready to go um, that is going to be a safer way and it only takes a minute so just in case if you want to be really successful with mixed media and you are not sure about your surface just is always a great start margaret said hardest words for me are the ones that are spelled the same similar but are different pronunciations oh yeah mm, that is confusing that is really really confusing and then on the top of that in different versions of english some of the words have different spelling however they are supposed to be the same and they're also pronounced a little bit differently so it's a little bit mind-boggling <laughs> so guys i hope you are ready <laughs> oh yeah jody said she grew up in the polish family and she expects she only knows the bad words i'm sure you know nice words as well <laughs> so um let me flip the screen so we can start working on these and I will tell you what kind of ideas I've got and it's really fun project something that you can you can use as inspiration and of course um I mean my plan is to have a lot of fun so whatever happens it's going to be okay I don't really feel that perfectionism is important in my life so you know that is important lesson in mixed media. Sometimes it's just better to go with the flow. Hello, Karen. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oh, people joining. Thank you. Thank you. Let me flip. Yep. Uh, that is this sound. It is my camera. <laughs> 
moving from top to the bottom. Okay, we are more or less in the middle. Don't get seasick uh, when I'm moving the camera. And let's have a look at what we can do. I will t show you what I've got in my basket. This is like the basket of ideas. I was trying to find the things that will be nice. So first of all, I found my leaves. This is the Monstera leaves from the collection that I released lately. And I was thinking these leaves, they look quite alike, uh, like some of the pumpkin leaves as well. So they may be very good choice. So this is what I have. <laughs> hello, hello. I can see a lot of people joining. Great to see you here. <laughs> yep, so I've got these. I picked some of the small HDF elements. They were on my table, so I dropped them into this bowl, thinking they may be useful. Hello, hello. And then I went into uh, the box of my old Prima flowers and I found these um, they are really old but look at that they're black they're black already so this is like perfect perfect okay it was tilt perfect perfect and they have these long stems so I can work with the stem around the top of the pumpkin or I can try to go on the other side. Hello to Florida. It's good to see you here. Yeah. So this is another choice. And then I started to dig even deeper and I found a box of old Prima flowers. And they're fun because they are thick brown paper. So, and they're in different sizes. So I can find some things to fill the composition with larger flowers as well. So they looked promising. Uh, this one is uh, slightly altered with <laughs> um, a white sand paste already, but it's fine. Hello! Hello, everybody! Good to see you! Then I was digging even deeper. Can you believe that? Um, I found old Prima crystals. Yeah, so these are not like 10 years old. These are like, huh, come on, 15 years old or maybe close. So because they are metal, metal stem, I can think about using them as a decoration to go around, you know, this is kind of good idea. And finally I can use them for something. So that seems like a good choice. And I don't really have to repaint them completely because they're kind of pumpkinish in color already. And from the same time, these crystals, <laughs> I still have these one or two packages, the same idea. So this is what I found. Uh, then I found these poppies from Donna Downey's collection, very, very old item. But I was thinking maybe, maybe these will be nice finishing touches. And for extra fun, look at these. Again, this is Prima Archaeology. Uh, how cute <laughs> these are. Right, so little crystals on the metal stem. Super cute. Maybe they will be good for adding some extra touch to the pumpkin. I ha I'm open for the options. Now, from my collection, except the, uh, the Monstera leaves, I have these metal flowers on hand. These are metal blooms and there are some really cool large flowers in that. So I'm hoping they will be good size to fit that composition. And just in case I got some mechanicals, of course, uh, I would like to add a bit of the mechanical vibe to the larger uh, pumpkin, of course. So these ones are on hand. And then uh, we've got some art mediums. So uh, first of all, we are going to think what we can do, how to make that composition work. Paper mache is possible to cut and it's possible to make some of the holes. However, I'm going to combine this kind of uh, attaching with heavy body gel 
And I'm also planning to use a little bit of the hot glue for making the drips and adding elements to it. So it's going to be combination work, but heavy body gel is going to keep everything in place. Um, I just want to remind you that hot glue is not suitable for mixed media. It is going to come off after some time. Uh, so if you would like to make a home decor item, if you want to temporarily attach something with the hot glue, it's good to put good coat of the regular glue or a gel medium on the top of that to make sure it is really secured. I just switch that on now. So this is going to warm up and we are going to start thinking about the composition. Let me open the embellishments and we are going to start taking some of the elements out. Hello, welcome to the show. I'm very glad you were here. So I have these, I have these, and I have a tool that may be helpful. This is a tool that is possible to poke holes. So I think I'm going to start with the hole that goes through that part. Mind your fingers when you do that. So I can put some part of this metal element through the stem. We'll see what happens. That would be through the stem, well. Let's see what I can do. If it's going to go as I was hoping. Well, I, I, now I have to be lucky. No, let's go other way. Small hole first. Yeah, generally yes, but a lot of patience and time. So I'm going to start with this. In the meantime, my heat gun is warming up. And sorry, my hot glue gun, my heat gun is here, safe. And we're trying to add the first embellishments just to see what is happening. Come on, cooperate. Nope. It's always like that. When you want to do something quickly, <sighs> oh well. In the worst case, I'm just going to put it inside. Yeah, maybe cut that bended part. Yeah, I'm just going to do it other way. I put this part here inside <laughs> hello this is how you learn in the hard way sometimes like me i told you perfection is overrated okay so it goes here and then i will be able to attach that with other embellishments as well yep so now let's look at the leaves and mechanical parts because it's supposed to be magical pumpkin i want some of the uh, cogs to go inside so first of all let's find the biggest one i would like to use it is coming from that set oh lucky me it was easy to open so i will find the sharp tool and i will cut a hole be careful when you do so, okay? Let's see how far I can go. You know what I'm trying to do? To put it inside a little bit, a little bit deeper, I think. Yep, 
Is it just me or is it very out of focus? Uh, I think it depends on where you are. Sometimes it, I can see it is slow now for a moment. So I think we have to be patient with YouTube. Yeah, Andrew says this is not too great on his side as well. So it may be out of focus as well. well Let's wait, okay? Let's wait and see what happens. At the moment, I'm cutting holes in the pumpkin using my knife <laughs> and trying not to cut my finger. Yeah, poor quality. Yeah, I guess my internet is acting out at the moment. It is kind of funny. Yeah, it will. It may clear. I can try to do one thing. Don't go anywhere, okay? If I'm going to disappear, don't panic. Let's see. Let's see. Better. Yay! Wait to wait a minute, and welcome to Elizabeth, who's new member. Yeah, I had to switch to. Uh, my phones instead. <laughs> Funny, huh? So um, instead of using my uh, ruler, <laughs> I am using my phone now. So it's just kind of funny. So as you can see, I'm preparing the spaces for the cogs. And I do it as a first thing because I would like to have it done more or less at the beginning. I need to make sure the holes are big enough so the hole, can, uh, sorry, so the cog can go deeper. Thank you for letting me know. You know, I can't really see the quality myself because on my screen, everything looks perfect all the time. So let's see. We've got three on that side. So for good measure, for a little bit of the balance, I would do similar thing here on the bottom. Maybe one or maybe two, we'll see. Uh, believe me, I'm cutting, and because I don't want to cut myself, I will do it in a safe way here, okay? Please, please. Yeah. Makes sense? Yeah. Uh, these are the joys of uh, hmm, mobile internet connection. So I'm glad that you told me because I didn't know. So on that side, we've got one, two, three. Here we've got two. It's kind of nice balance. Of course, we can add more if you want to. But uh, on the other hand, it's going to go everywhere. So that will be a problem to hold it in my hand. Maybe I will add just one here so I can hold it easily for the for the video. Which part is the nicest? This one is nice. This part is nicer, I think. So let's add one more here. I'm cutting again. <laughs> I'm trying to find nice looking little cog, maybe this one. Um, maybe, oh, yeah, this one is really nice. This is from my collection. Okay, let's see. Oh, hello to Greece. What's all? They want your cushion. Carefully, carefully. So this is the idea I came up with yesterday. So putting these in the pumpkin. So it looks like they're coming out. So it's like a mechanical pumpkin. And that is beginning. And of course, because these are not going to stay as they are now, you can take 
a little bit of the hot glue and secure them just in the place. For now, it's going to be okay. I don't want to knock them out by accident. So this is going to secure it for now, but later I'm going to use heavy body gel around it for sure. Because I wouldn't like to kill it just by not being careful. And these textures are going to be completely fine because there will be more of this texture happening as well. Of course, when you do it, don't touch. Don't check if it's ready. Okay. Just a bit of the texture. It's always fine. And this one as well. I will let it cool, cool down and I will similar thing to the small one. Of course, for the small one, I need to find smaller cogs. Hello, hello. If I'm not answering to a very important comment, you can always comment again and in capital letters. So it's going to... So it is going to be visible for me or Andrew will be able to read it for me as well. So as you can see, I'm starting with construction work. Uh, sometimes you just have to spend a bit of time on putting things in the right position and then adding other elements. Oh, this is cute. Just perfect size. Baby pumpkin. <laughs> no worries, you are not too late. We are starting. We're just starting and having fun. I think three is going to be a good number. So let's put this one on the other side. Oh, this is much thinner, easier to cut. <laughs> one, two, and maybe here we're going to add three. Carefully, carefully. Mind your fingers. I pick the metal ones because they are, um, I would say, thinner, so easier to put inside of the pumpkin. Quite cool, I think. And then we do the same thing. We will secure it with the hot glue for now. Uh, the chipboard ones, I put one of these inside and it was harder to put in because it was thicker. So depending what you are using, you have to make the hole a little bit wider. Hello, more and more people joining. I'm so lucky. Okay. I decided to work on two pumpkins so I can switch from one to another. And we're going to use different colors to decorate them. So I think this is going to be quite fun. And now, coming back to the to the big pumpkin, you can see it's pretty well sitting in. <laughs> I will just secure this part of the wire in that place as well. So it's not going to go too far. Just in case, if it wants to come out, there will be no way. And now, I would love to add some leaves, some flowers, and some dimensional embellishments, like dimensional flowers. That's why I was looking for different styles. So they're going to sit on the top here, and then we're going to create textures on the pumpkin that are going to that's going to look quite nice there will be things which are going to be like uh, imitation of sand there will be things which are going to be drips so quite a lot of things going on on one pumpkin and i'm going to start with picking the the leaves and the flowers and this one goes in the safe place because i don't want to cut myself by accident 
Well, I hope you're going to have some fun with me here. <laughs> because I'm getting excited about this project. So first of all, let's see what we can do. I will start with the big elements first. So the biggest ones that I can use today are these flowers, right? So I'm going to go quite deep. So this style is lovely. And I would go with my heavy body gel. This is the heaviest medium of them all. And if you're wondering why I'm not painting the project up front with uh, any kind of gesso, paper mache is almost like paper so it's really matte you don't have to worry it is going to be too slippery so we can start gluing right away <laughs> the pumpkin is made of paper mache so that is paper and it's empty inside so it's quite easy to work on i would say um this there's a little bit like a plastic form in it first which is like the shape of it and then it is all covered with the paper so that's why it is so easy to alter now as you can see i'm taking big chunks of um, heavy body gel and i'm putting these elements really close to each other to make it look a little bit more funky I can always add details like that later. Let's go around and let's see what we can add here. I would love more of these wire <laughs> elements, but I will cut them first. It's a blank that I bought one year ago. And this is something that you can buy in different shapes. Um, I've seen them uh, in the decoupage shops quite a lot. I think what happens, people buy them uh, to alter with the decoupage techniques. And that means uh, they may be just simple balls or they may be animal shaped or they may have like this pumpkin or other foot. I'm putting this one as well, here as well. I remember when we went to the Frankfurt Fair, there was one stand that was completely full of different kinds and shapes of paper mache. So I think if you're going to check in your local craft store, they may have quite good selection already. Now I have to wait and hold it. <laughs> you I mean your big screen that's fun oh I'm glad you like heavy body that's very nice to hear see I'm waiting for this to settle so I can put more embellishments to secure it and I can use these later for like more fun decoration Let's look for some other elements. Uh, in general, in this style of mixed media, which is very rich, the more unique shapes and textures you are going to use, the better, because that is going to create this eclectic look. And that also means your project is going to look very, very inspiring. And it will be always so fun to check what is really there happening. So that's why I keep looking for really different shapes and sizes when I work on my uh, selection. So here, for example, I'm trying to put this poppy because I quite like the combination and I'm going to put a mini poppy next to that. So it's going to have this autumn feel to it. A little bit. Ah, I know, there is this silicone thingy I hate. Come on, go. Go, go, go. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this silicone thing is not our friend. Usually very annoying. I'm going to pick up this extra gel with the brush. 
yeah, glue dots, yeah. They help to place the product in the packaging, but otherwise they're kind of annoying. Ta -dum, ta -dum. Ta -dum, ta -dum. I'll need another flower here, but not the same, right? I'm looking for different shape now. So let's take this one instead. Again, big blob of gel and putting that in the right position. So you can see I'm using basically the flowers to secure everything and to make it work. <laughs> and I will look for the flowers which are smaller. I've got some flowers here as well. Oh, another one with the wine, which is cool, but not. I don't need it now. Mmm, like a mini rose will be really nice. I have some roses like that. They're going to fill the space nicely. The sugar rose. More of the roses with the stems. Little ones like this. And that one is nice. You know, the color doesn't matter. We're all going to paint it. So just take what is uh, in the right size and what is attracting your attention. So that is really lovely here. Yeah, coming together nicely. I agree. So far, so good. And again, we're putting that in here and we can even combine that with this mini rose on the edge. It's going to be magical pumpkin, so there's no problem with mixing all the, po all the possible shapes and sizes. There's empty space here, so we can put another rose in there. I'm going to move it a little bit. First the rose. And then the poppy. Perfect project for using up all these flowers that you have at home and all these embellishments that don't fit um, or they are not just the color you wanted because repainting makes it all much, much easier. Let's take this one out a little bit. thinking what to do with that. It's quite long, but it's... Okay, I will take care of that later. I have an idea, but once I will paint it, it's going to be done. And then we have space here. I think it's time to add some gears. So instead of a flower, I'm going to put one gear and then I can combine it with another one coming from the flower space oh, oh. Huh. that is going to be quite cool i will try to show you that in the angle and what i think i'm going to do i'm going to put a mat because i'm afraid on the dark background you can't really see well what i'm doing So the mud is coming and that should help us see a bit better. Yeah, now you can see better. So the big elements go first, then we're going to fill that composition with smaller bits and pieces. So do you always have a chance to decorate it a little bit better? For example, on the top of that cog, I can stick another poppy glue dot.
that is quite nice. And I would love to add a little bit of the things going down from that composition, but you know, that's a very good start so far. So I will look for the smaller embellishments and leaves. That leaf is really large. So I think I'm going to put on one side only. I will try to put it under the flower. Yeah, and it's going to be even magical later when it's painted. This pumpkin comes together quite nicely. As you can see, I prefer to use a lot of gel and then I will push it down in the composition. So it's going to secure it no matter what. Things are going to stick to each other. Remember, we don't want this uh, hot glue to chip off in the um, <clears throat> very unpleasant way. And of course, you can dry the heavy body gel with your hot glue gun, hot, hot heat gun. Today I've got the problem with the um, difference between hot glue and heat gun. Strange, but true. Oh, hello to Canada, to Montreal. <laughs> I can see 100 people watching. Wow, guys, this is great. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. That feels wonderful. See, we are making these leaves coming out of the composition now. So this is going to fill the space nicely and it's going to be nice ending of the composition, of course. And again, I'm pushing this gel in there. So it's going to hold it in place nicely. And for good measure, we have one, two, we are supposed to put three according to what they say about composition. Two smaller ones next to each other should work well. Hello, Cassiope. I can see you like the project. <laughs> it's fun to make, really. And this is this kind of careless projects when the only hardship is uh, to put it all together. So it's once you glue it, it's going to stay in place and it's going to be fine. Then you can focus on painting and adding the color to it and so on and so on. So like the hardest part is now to make sure everything stays in place. I would love to put something inside of this flower because it's really empty. Maybe another flower? No. I will find a mini, mini embellishment. Mm, but first I clean my finger. And that is going to be... Um, one of the bolts, maybe? I have quite a lot of these here. I keep collecting them when I'm teaching classes. So when I come back home, I have leftovers and I throw them in the box. <laughs> Let's put this little screw. How long have you been designer for Prima? Um, I think I made my first designs in 2014. So to count it right, it's going to be 14, 6, 7 years now, I think. Am I counting right? And the first, uh, the first um, release I made with Prima, that was paper collection together with mechanicals, my metal embellishments. I'm adding this for a more nice touch. Uh, and uh, it all started from there. I'm so lucky to be able to work with them and uh, to make my dreams come true. It's really great relationship we have and it's just great that uh, they trust me enough 
to go with more crazy ideas. <laughs> it's really, really wonderful feeling, I have to tell you. So now, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to add pebbles. Uh, pebbles, these are little stones of different sizes and they are going to add extra texture and they're going to be great finishing touches for the composition as well. So if you have an empty spot, you can always add a pebble. <coughs> yes, you can use the bolts in the center of the flowers. That works really well. However, here they're already with centers and I would have to remove them first. And I didn't do that. So now I have to uh, go with the flow and I just accept them as they are. I'm just going to play with the these pebbles. They're going to look like a bit of the hmm, toadstool effect. And don't worry about the gel. I'm going to clean it up later. That's very cute. I'm just sticking the... These are the vintage pebbles. And here we have a lot of empty space. So I feel this is perfect for pebble. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. That's very nice of you. Yeah, it's been a long story, but we've got really good and uh, fruitful relationship with Prima. And I'm <laughs> really thrilled that I was given that chance and we can continue until now. If thing is, we really get along really well. <laughs> See, very nice finishing touches, I think. Mm, too close, too close, maybe here. I'm going to clean up a little bit and I will continue to other places. If you wait for too long, the gel may stick and stay forever. So before it's going to be too late, you may want to go with your brush and keep your brush in the water. How cute is that? <laughs> I think I should do maybe one or two more somewhere to the bottom. Let's add a little bit on that side as well. Uh, pebbles usually like to be in groups, so they are uh, family and friends. There's always better when they are together. And there should be different sizes next to each other, not the same. Because when they're the same, that starts to look a little bit odd. But when they are all different, then everything seems to be fine. And then a little bit more here. How do you like it so far? It wasn't too complicated. We are just gluing things down. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy you like it. Let's put pebbles next to our cogs as well.
You can see I keep using the same heavy body gel and I'm just pressing the pebbles on the <laughs> places that are dirty with gel. I'm looking for the places that I would like to feel. Come on, don't be like that stick. And now I'm looking from the top and I can see this one is too much. So I'm going to remove it. Yeah, it's really fairy fairy tale pumpkin. I think I should push this one in there for extra support. And maybe one more here on the top. Quite nice. Okay, let's clean it up. Yeah, of course I'm going to paint it. This is just the beginning. <laughs> I'm just adding elements now and I will let it dry and then we'll focus on another pumpkin. But the other one, I would like to try differently. I told you I would like to add metallic flakes. So here the metallic flakes are going to be on the bottom and on the other one, the metallic flakes are going to be more on the top. So we are going to focus on that first. It's easier to put them when there are no embellishments. So let's say this composition is almost ready. Now what I need to do is to take some kind of tool and to push this heavy body gel around elements like this. I have no idea how long this video is going to take. It's not going to be uh, two hours for sure. It's going to be more, I'm just telling you because I'm ambitious and I wanted to do two pumpkins. Oops. Yeah, as you can see, I'm securing the elements with the heavy body gel. I don't want any of these to escape. Greetings from Vienna. Your work is really doing. Oh, thank you. Times um, wanted uh, to know that your camera transmits uh, very blurred. Well, I hope it is not blurred anymore. Can you tell me if it's okay now? Because I'm getting worried. We did whatever we could. And now I'm again it's okay. So on that side, and you says it's okay. Okay, it's back to normal. <laughs> Perfectly imperfect. I think this is just the uh, natural beauty of our internet connection. What we can do, it's all just taking that with patience. I could, of course, only record videos, but I think it's much more fun to interact with people when you create. So I prefer live classes. And that's why I prefer live shows. Yeah, sorry. Sometimes you just need to give it a moment and it's going to be back to normal. So now when you have so much of the clogged gel, oh, one more here, uh, you can always clean it up. So don't worry about that. And with these elements, it's always better to have more of the texture instead of being too quick. So what I'm doing now, it's uh, securing the elements which are just mounted with the hot glue. I learned over the years that you cannot trust hot glue on the mixed media project, especially on the project that people touch a lot because sooner or later it is going to come off. And 
it's usually sooner than later. And that is uh, very unfortunate when you make a project that is supposed to be home decor. Or you want to give it to somebody as a gift. So I always recommend if you have to use the hot glue, like today I really have to, please make sure you're going to combine it with some gel. It is going to secure the space. So I'm trying to clean up as much as possible, but I'm not going to cry because of the imperfections. Uh, there will be more happening in a moment. Yeah. So that is going to hold it in case if the hot glue is not going to do it. So now I'm going to dry it a little bit with the heat gun. And then we will focus on the second smaller pumpkin. If you have any questions, this is the right moment to ask. Hello, good to see you. Cześć, Tommy. <coughs> the gel is transparent after drying. So uh, it's going to turn a bit invisible, but we're going to paint it with gesso anyway. So you don't have to worry about the colors that I kept. Like by accident, we only basically colors which are orange and rusty and neutral but in reality i would just use anything that i can find so we have a good start of course now we have to dry it before painting and embellishing with the final touches. Well, greetings to Mexico. Good to see you here. It's good to dry from different angles so you can reach to the bottom levels of the gel. So it's going to dry better. So as you can see, I'm trying to blow under the leaves or from the top. What can I use if I don't have heavy gel, Karen asked. Well, the very good choice is also uh, 3D gloss gel, which is a little bit thinner, but still very good glue. Modeling paste or 3D matte gel. Or if you have any other brand, you can try with heavy gel from Liquitex or Golden. They're not as sticky, but they're kind of heavy, so they're going to do the job. And uh, that will be the best solutions. Uh, I know that on different markets, there are different kinds of glue, but for the dimensional kind of mixed media, glues are not always enough. That's why I keep gluing with the pastes instead, like gel mediums and modeling paste is my choice. <laughs> oh, I can see some people got inspired. That's very good. Well, we're going to paint it later, so you'll never know what will be the final result. Like, I know because I have idea, but, you know, a little bit of a mystery. Oh, thank you. <laughs> if I only have 50 likes, that's still very good. Also, it's good to press down the things. I'm trying to make sure that everything is touching the bottom so the jelly is able to grip, you know, to get it in the right position. Okay, now I'm going to leave it as it is to cool down and to dry naturally. I will put it in the safe place. So goodbye for now. 
and we're going to focus on another pumpkin. So the second pumpkin, I would like to cover with the metallic flakes from the top. And to have that done, it's going to be better if I will paint it first with gesso. So I won't have this problem to have gesso uh, mixing with the flakes. So very quick painting with uh, black gesso. Um, I'm going to use black because my pumpkins are going to be metallic. And when I have metallic, and uh, I usually start thinking about, hmm, let's get some cool shadows done. So I'm going to use heavy gesso in black color. And especially on the top where the flakes are going to be, I would start with the uh, gesso. So it's going to be my first step. And then I'm going to add some embellishments. It's going to sit on the top and I will be just painting that embellishments partially. So here... We start with the black gesso and then we're going to put oh thank you so much i got a tip for my hard work today thank you thank you to terfunken uh that is lovely like ah uh, what can i do i have uh, oh i know i have a special halloween butt and a special Halloween bat is saying hello and thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yay. It's also prima, but very, very old. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that is so nice. Um, it's always a pleasure when I create for you. And you saying thank you this way is always, always appreciated. <laughs> so you can see just dries quickly. So we don't have to wait for too long before we're going to work with the uh, metallic flakes, okay? Would you use the heat gun if you weren't a hurry for a video? Well, Margaret, let me tell you, I am not master of patience. So, <laughs> in this project, when I don't really have that much of the elements and it's not super, super dimensional, this pumpkin is not dimensional really, comparing to what I do, heat gun is okay. But if I do something really uh, complicated and there are multiple layers there, then I would let it dry naturally. For example, in my kitchen, where I have really hot space. And that helps me a lot to speed up the process. But most of the times I use the heat gun. First of all, these products are designed to work with heat gun. And that is not a problem for them to dry this way. And also, I would love to do it in one sitting. So that's why heat gun is a good solution. Look, this is matte. That means it is ready to go. I can paint the bottom now. Why not? Of course, smaller pumpkin will have smaller amount of embellishments. Not as many is going to fit. So I will just decorate it of smaller, smaller pebbles and just a few flowers maybe. But also this pumpkin is going to be different color palette. So we're going to have more, more fun. We're going to try two different colors instead of one, which I think is extra benefit. <laughs> the black goth pumpkin. The other one is going to be black and goth as well, but uh, in a moment. <laughs> yeah, the bat. <laughs> I think the bat is our friend today. We are making pumpkins, so this is perfect little friend for us to join. So I'm doing that because I would love the flakes coming from under the embellishments. And once you have the embellishments on, Putting these flakes under is going to be a challenge. So um, on the other pumpkin, the big one, the, um, the metallic flake is going to be on the bottom. Almost no embellishments, no problem, piece of cake. Here, I wanted the opposite. Uh, so <clears throat> we have to start with the flakes first. Pumpkin, I want to be in golden reddish pumpkinish color. So I will pick the flakes which are mixture of copper and gold 
vintage. So this is combination of these two colors. And if you don't know how to work with the metallic flake and the uh, gilding glue, this is the product which is dedicated to the metallic flake from my Earth Extravagance collection. Uh, the, there's a whole video I made on it, so you can check on the YouTube channel to see more info. But general rule is very easy. You need to wait with the application until clean until the glue is going to get transparent. So you can dry it with the heat gun a little bit, or you can just let it dry naturally. Yeah, uh, well, I think it may be quicker if I just open that because <clears throat> I'm not the master of cleaning the nozzle as well. <laughs> you can see how sticky it is. My fingers are already sticking. And this glue has quite long working time. Uh, it, the formula was done especially uh, for the metallic flake. So it's going to wait for you <laughs> with application. You don't have to worry, you have to work really fast. It's going to stay tacky until you're going to put the flakes on, okay? So first of all, I'm going to clean my fingers, so I'm not going to stick to the flakes right away. Okay, that will do. Now, a bit of the protection of the space. It's not going to help that much, but it's going to help. I take all these possible sticky stuff away. <laughs> oh, you, dis uh, you discussed the difference between fall and autumn. I think the difference is in uh, autumn is more British English while fall is more American English. And this is still the same season. So for me, I keep using both because it all depends who I'm talking to. But for me, it's more natural to say autumn because this was the English version that I was learning at school. Ah, look at uh, Anya's advice. And this is a very cool tip. Uh, if you have a problem with the flakes, uh, the suggestion is to use some baby powder or talc. So it's not going to stick to you that much. And that may be a great idea. If you don't have baby powder, you can surely use cornstarch or uh, potato starch. And that is going to do a very good job as well. So look, I'm starting with coat of the gilding glue right <sighs> embellishments are going to go here so i want these flakes to go from the top to let's say halfway of the pumpkin so it's going to blend really nicely you don't have to be perfect again we're going to just accept what is going to happen you can see the glue is turning clear quite quickly. So again, not that long waiting time until you're ready for application. <laughs> well, I also speak Spanish and use oh, to a Polish English type look street. Yeah, uh, Tommy is referring to something that is called Polish English, which in fact we name Ponglish. And that is really fun version of English used by Polish immigrants. And uh, uh, we usually use nouns and verbs from English and adding uh, Polish uh, declination and or Polish endings on the top of that. That sounds uh, crazy but to understand I think you need to know two languages because with just one it will be too hard to understand what we're trying to say it happens to us at home a little bit sometimes English words come quicker than Polish the corrector don't help me with the English yeah 
a generally translator is uh, not your best friend. Okay, so look, white is gone. Right? So that looks like it is possible to apply the flakes on the top. Easy peasy. Now, <clears throat> without sneezing, coughing, or any sudden moves, we are going to apply these on the top. <laughs> and I will find some old brush I can use for putting that on. Oh, this is uh, old brush. Nobody is going to feel sorry if I'm going to use it. And now I will just sprinkle that on the top. And you can see the flakes, they're sticking really nicely. I'm trying not to touch too much because this glue is still there. And you can use the brush to press it down. And look at that. Let's take a little bit more of this copper. Oh, it's a really big piece. Wow. Okay. Why not? Maybe a little bit more of gold in some parts. Well, then you have quite extravagant manicure until you wash your hands properly, but it's okay. You can tell your friends that you've been crafting and this is the new thing that you wanted to have. Okay, let's use the brush to put shit in. I'm not taking that off yet. I'm just trying to fill all the glue spaces with the flakes. Okay, so now you can leave it to sit for a moment. So it's going to stick really well. Pick up the big things, the big flakes, and put it back in the packaging for the next time. You can see how shiny it is. Oh, I'm happy you wanted to buy the really fun thing to use in mixed media. A little bit underrated, I think. But they're just perfect item. Now, a uh, break for washing my fingers. And when I'm back, we're going to take off the excess. I can feel my skin, which is better. <laughs> and I will make sure my hands are dry so the flakes are not sticking to me that much. And now over the rubbish bin, or if you are in different part of the world, trash bin, I'm going to brush over the excess just with the same brush. I'm going to take it uh, off, okay? You have to believe me, I'm doing that. And of course the pumpkin fell into the bed as well. But it was planned as part of the process. A little bit of the progress. You can see how pretty it is.
So this is the pumpkin I wanted to decorate in a little bit different style. We are starting with the metallic flakes and then we are adding embellishments on the top and then we're going to repaint it. And the other pumpkin, the bigger one, is going to have the flake on the bottom so I could start with embellishments. Almost there. Nice. Right. Good start. Now we can find little thingies that we can put on the top of the pumpkin. So I would say some smaller flowers. And I would love to add the leaf as well. But this leaf is really, really large. So I have to cut it smaller. So let's say I'm cutting part of it. <clears throat> now it's going to fit much better. I'm going to look through my flowers to find one or two in the good size. Oh, you are checking the time in different parts of the world. Perfect. I think this flower is going to be really nice. You know what? It's velvet. Wow. So, hmm. sounds great. And I think maybe just the rose. Yeah, the rose will be enough. This is too big. I need smaller roses. Oh, I found perfect little rose and another one in blue color. Small pumpkin, small flowers. I think that makes sense. Wow, we have over 100 people watching already. Well, that is great to see you all here. I'm very, very happy that you are uh, joining us tonight. Well, today, depending on where you are. And I hope you're going to use that inspiration in your projects as well. Okay, first, I would like to add this flower with the long stem. So I'm going to use the hot glue with the glue stick. I need new glue stick to just attach it temporary the same way as we did with the big pumpkin. So first of all, the flower goes here. Stay, 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 stay. And then I can put this leaf next to that. So it's going to stay for now. And then we can combine it with this cute, cute, smaller roses and some other small embellishments. And this is going to be the pumpkin's antenna. I don't know how they're called in English. These little thingies that some of the plants have. And they are not stems, and they are not leaves, they are just swirly things. <laughs> so you know what I mean, I hope. Uh, you know, pumpkins have these. I'm just thinking, but this is going to be too much. Next time, next pumpkin maybe. We can try with the poppies as well. Tendrils. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. Like, Carolyn has, has all the patience with me with my adventurous English sometimes. And like, she's like, yeah, I think this is kind of right. But you may want to use this word instead. <laughs> yeah, tendrils. Tendrils. <laughs> That's a pretty cool word. Okay. Sitting still. Good. 
So now, you know what I'm doing. Uh, if you were here before, heavy body gel back on board. We're going to stick these with generous amount of the heavy body gel. Just empty space here. I can fill it with another rose or oh, maybe here is going to be better. And then in that empty spot, I can put a poppy like there was this um, resin poppy or plastic poppy. Katarina said uh, she loves flakes because uh, it's the easiest way to make and have such a beautiful result. Yeah, uh, this level of shiny metallic is hard to get with anything else. So if you want to go to ultra shiny metallic look, um, these flakes are really great solution. Oh, this is cute. <laughs> this is really cute. And so if you're, you know, into this kind of look, um, I would really recommend trying because uh, metallic flakes, they're pretty cool stuff. Let's add a little bit more of the flowers. Maybe this one here. And of course, because why not? We can also add the pebbles. But this time the pebbles are going to be a little bit less visible. Not so many as I had before. Yeah, you can see the flakes on my wrist already as well. Yeah, they love to be in the good company. <laughs> I'm sure uh, very soon my cats and dogs, they're also going to be beautifully gilded with the flakes. So um, after the show, I'm going to take Hoover and uh, just clean the floor in case of the situation. <laughs> So here we're just adding little details. Today I was taking photos for a project and I spilled the golden paint. So I was seriously worried that uh, my dogs may get painted. That clearly didn't happen, but you never know. You have to be very careful and quick. Especially Kai, he is still very playful puppy, uh, large puppy, but still he's very playful. So he, he would wait for me to drop something on the floor by accident and he will take it. And he will think this is for him, of course. And after that, you know, problems start. So you can see this composition is, of course, smaller and not so complicated. All these imperfections we can later sprinkle on with uh, some kind of glitter or some kind of microbeads. Don't worry about that part. We just want to have this uh, co composition on the top sitting safely. I will check if there's anything else here that I wanted to use. And I missed it <laughs> because things like that happen. Hmm. I have this, but I'm not sure if I will be able to add it. Maybe. Yeah, that would be nice. So this is the leftover from the big vine uh, with the crystals that we put into our bigger pumpkin. Too short, too long. Maybe some mechanical element as well. There are little cogs, so they're going to fit here. Mm. 
<laughs> How are you doing so far? Any questions? We can put a little... Hmm. A little metal bolt in here. <laughs> I'm looking for something to put it in. Maybe this one is going to be fine. I will stick these and we were going to use our heat gun to dry it, of course. And in the meantime, we can switch back to our first pumpkin. So all these imperfections, no worries, we're going to take care of them in the close future. Very cute. We, of course, need to make sure the gel is going to keep them in place. So a little bit of drying now. And again, the same way, if it's possible, try to blow from different angles. So you can get closer to the bottom of the composition mm, the, I can smell the flowers is fabric so I have to make sure I'm not going to melt it by accident okay so we are almost like halfway done So now we're going to play with the special effects and with color, starting with the big pumpkin, of course. It's always a good idea to give it longer drying time so everything is going to stay in place. In the video class like that, it's important really to be on the schedule, so uh, sometimes it's good to have something else to do. <laughs> Tommy is telling his story when he was uh, sticking 48 little drawers together for the advent calendar and I am full of admiration because I would never be so dedicated to anything. Okay, now we can check with our fingers how it is doing quite well. So one quick dry again and we're going to add the drips to this uh, pumpkin as well this pumpkin is quite tall so we have space for adding extra touches if we want to and i was thinking uh, hot glue drips are going to be perfect because it's a magical pumpkin I will clean up some space in the meantime. Uh, vintage pebbles, vintage pebbles here.
yeah, I keep using the jars like that to have all of these elements on hand. So I have quite a big collection of the jars with the label on the top. And that's how I can see I put the wrong label on the wrong jar. Vintage. Yeah, the top seems to be quite fine. Look, this one is a bit challenging. I have to be careful with this leaf because it's really uh, away from the, uh, the whole composition. So things may go a little bit unexpected. And now the drips. Uh, drips are really nice extras you can add. So when you work with the drips, of course, you have to be extremely careful. And it's good to have really, really hot glue gun. You're going to create the effect like there's some kind of drip coming from the whole pumpkin. Can see it's very easy but um, in our composition that is going to add a very nice touch of course remember about having extra glue stick on hand because there's quite a lot of the glue going into that technique <laughs> so i have one more and of course please by any chance don't even think about checking if this is done okay there's no way to touch please promise never ever trying to get kind of uneven effect so some of the drips are going to be longer and some of them will be shorter some of them will be thicker and some of them will be thinner Carefully, carefully. It's really up to you how these you would like to make. But from my experience, it's just nice when they are more or less in groups, like there's like a group of the hot glue drips coming from one place and then another. That makes sense, kind of. Let's see. I'm trying to hold it just by the stem. So we have a little bit of the drips everywhere. Oh, look at this one. This is very dramatic drip. <laughs> now, we will let it cool down. <laughs> yeah, clever reuse of the empty jars. Exactly. <laughs> Once I have these, usually I have these after classes. So I can use them for something and then you know, it's just easier to have them on hand. And 
Why not? A little bit of the fresh air to make sure the glue is cooling down faster. And now we are going to go to painting with black gesso. My plan is to use uh, metallic waxes on the pumpkins, but then combined with the drips of the acrylic metallic paint. So it's going to look very natural, I think, and I'm sure some of you will love that look. But first, gesso and flakes. When you can see the glue turns matte, more, uh, yeah, not as shiny, I would say. That is the moment when you can touch and everything seems to be fine, no problems. So I will start from the bottom. And I'm going to paint my pumpkin with the black gesso. Remember, we're going to paint everything anyway, so a little bit of the imperfections is not going to be a drama. If you can avoid painting your fingers, that will be really nice, but on the other hand, well, gesso is just gesso. It's easy to clean off. With this kind of black heavy gesso, one coat is usually enough, so you don't have to spend too much time repeating the job. This is really, really thick and really black uh, version of the black gesso. So our job is going to be easy. Of course, you can paint the cogs as well. We're going to wax them anyway. Okay, so first part is done. I will dry the bottom so I can put it on the bottom and then we're going to paint the top, which is a little bit more challenging because of the embellishments. But fear not, we're going to do that as well. Try not overheat the uh, project now because we have the hot glue and <laughs> uh, it may melt, so try to move your heat gun a little bit, okay? Don't blow too much in one point. It's a very dramatic drip, yeah. Okay, so it's, I think it's okay to put it on the bottom. There will be metallic flake anyway, so it should be fine. Now, the second challenge, painting the top, right? So, <sighs> this is the moment when it's good to have a tea or coffee nearby. As you can see, when I have these challenging embellishments, such as dimensional flowers, I just go like dabbing instead of painting perfectly. It's much easier. Also, it's good to start with the big brush and then switch to the smaller one. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect because we are going to paint it with metallic colors in a moment anyway. So, you know. These ones, it all depends on you. You can paint them or not. There will be a chance to paint them with acrylic paint anyway. And they are kind of neutral. So that should be fine.
So, you know, goes quite fast. It's not a very challenging uh, project to paint. A lot of flat surface without embellishments. Sometimes when you go really, really crazy with amount of elements, then it takes longer. The biggest challenge, they are the flowers, of course. And it's sometimes hard to get inside of the flower. Try to go from different angles, maybe, as much as you can. I was told that I paint quite fast, but I think this is just a matter of uh, confidence. Like, I don't have to be super precise. And I know there will be a lot of other things happening as well. So that's a bit of a confidence. noises this is this challenging leaf so I have to try to go from the bottom as well and paint under the leaf without moving this too much I'm trying to go from different angles and then what also you can do, you can dry and then it's easier to touch, you know, hold the project in hand and then do the finishing touches. So I will try, of course, to do that. <laughs> this rose is visibly unpainted, so I will do that. Okay, so short break now for drying and then last touches. <laughs> you paint fast. <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> I have to paint fast. Thank you, Margaret. Have a wonderful time and then we see each other later. You can see how quickly it just dries. When it turns matte, this part is basically almost dry already, which is great. Because that is saving a lot of time. So somebody mentioned the Gothic pumpkin and now we have large Gothic pumpkin happening. Okay, so now I can see some parts, of course, in desperate need of painting. First of all, the top, the stem. Then look, there's a bit of the petal that I missed. Then some parts here this cog I think I should be switching to the smaller brush now so this one goes back now I take the brush which is easier to fit into smaller spaces and then if there's something annoying like really really annoying now you can get there easier this is the moment when some people who don't really like um, dark colors they feel uh, they're losing their confidence don't worry this color is going to go away very soon we are just using that black gesso as a natural shadow in between the embellishments and as a primer, of course. 
primer is going to help our acrylic paints stick better to everything. It's going to help our flakes and our waxes to stick better. And of course, this is like natural coverage, like the first start before final painting. In fact, I want this pumpkin to be silver, so you can imagine it's still going to be gothic, but just different kind of gothic. Oh, see, I see you. And I see you here. That will do. Okay, so now drying. And we can do the same thing with the small pumpkin in the meantime. Yeah, when everything is black like that, I love it as well. Bye, Karen! <laughs> the hot glue because I don't think we're going to use it anymore but it's going to be easier and now we'll move to the other pumpkin now while well, this one is drying in the meantime baby we're going to see how it is seems to be fine so now with this black dress I'm just going to paint the embellishment I will take the smaller brush and I will try to go on the embellishments only not going too much on the metal effect and in the meantime we are drying the other pumpkin Hello, hello, good to see you. Better late than never. We were waiting for you, of course. You can go a little bit on the metallic effect. It does not matter, really. It's up to you if you want to paint everything or not. I just prefer to have everything painted, so this way it's always safer with application of the waxes or paints because you just know what is going to happen. Ready? Oh, no, sorry, this one is not ready. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Can blow on this one as well, thank you. Now, let's have a look. I think this is ready for the painting. Our first step is going to be adding the metallic on the bottom, just like we did here. Uh, the metallic uh, flake is going to be on the half of the pumpkin, but on the bottom half, while here on the top. So, first of all, I'm going to bring um, silver flakes this time. I want it to be silver, so we have silver flakes. I take away sticky stuff such as gesso in a safe space. I'm bringing back the gilding glue. 
Yeah, you, I have a helper. He is very helpful and he's well prepared. So, <laughs> this is um, the one that we have here already. Um, I'm not sure if I need to add more, maybe not. And now the challenge is to go upside down. So, uh, maybe don't go anywhere. I need some serious help with the flakes. Second pair of hands. So now we start from the bottom with the gilding glue for metallic flakes. And I'm going to take that as far up as I feel is going to be nice. You can see again, it's white when you apply it, but then when it's going to dry, it's going to get completely transparent. Yeah, perfection here is not really needed. It's going to be a grungy project anyway, so, you know, whatever happens, happens. <laughs> I will try to use up all the gilding glue that I have here because it will be a waste, you can't put it back in the tube. Okay, so we are going as far as half of the pumpkin, I guess. I think we can go even further but I'm running out of glue. Uh, this is not a successful try. Chodź. Hold it like this from the bottom. Nie muszę rękami wziąć całymi. O właśnie. Okay. A little bit more. Wow. Stick, don't go anywhere. Yeah. Oh, you can feel it's very tacky already. Okay. Now, let's dry it. I try to go from every way. It's too much, you can just try to make it not so concentrated. And now the challenge of putting that all together. Okay, hold it like this. Thank you. <clears throat> Protection. And we are going to apply the... <laughs> we are going to use the metallic flakes on the top. Over here, please. Just hold it, hold it. Can you hold it like this? Thank you. Or like this. Thanks. So, we are going to do it uh, with three hands now. <laughs> Four hands at the point. It's a lot, a lot of the flake. Kai, come in. Yeah. Will help. The dog may help as well. Try 
try to make them a little bit more flat if you can some parts are just concentrated that you know like many layers in one place so wherever you're going to st stick it's going to be safe to touch so that kind of makes sense i find my pushing brush It's very silver. It's very, very silver. So it's going to be beautiful. Of course, this is the moment when the dog wants to go out because this is the dog's nature. <laughs> so if you hear some very sad noises coming from the background, no, he's not dying yet. This is just, uh, he's bored a little bit or maybe he wants to go to do his business <laughs> or maybe just trying to check on the birds and hedgehogs. That's also possible. Okay, I think I can hold it myself now. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> My pleasure. Your pleasure. Uh -huh. Trying to push it wherever. So you can see the same technique just from other angle. Pressing, pressing, pushing, pushing. Here's a spot that I missed because I can still see the shiny glue, so I can put the flakes in there. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful silver, thank you. Uh, well, he's silver kind of anyway, my dog, so it will be just extra level of shine. I think we covered everything. Okay, we put it in the safe place, putting the leftovers in. Only the big ones, because the small ones, I am not able to collect them again. But you can see a bit of the metallic flake from the jar goes very long way. So if you're wondering if you want to buy it, uh, generally, they go long, long way. So you don't have to worry that maybe you're going to use it up quickly. The same with the glue. You can see the glue goes long way. So it's a good investment if you would like to add this extra metallic shine to your project. And you know the drill already. I'm going to wash my hands. Oh no. Not even wash. I'm going to go over the trash bin and take all the excess. I try to do my best. Of course you do your best. I lost one element and it's in the bin. No. This <sighs> poppy flower. So, as you can see, we are getting this kind of effect now. Takes a minute or two to get rid of the excess. 
but look how beautiful it is. I took bigger brush now, easier to do. Checking. Pretty amazing, to be honest. Better than I expected. agree that you showed me that you're in independent flower but for the sake of today's video you can agree to stay in place okay I have all the patience in the world. Hot, hot. Zmuchaj na tego wstrętnego kurde kwiata. So, <laughs> now we can go back to the coloring. This is dry. And we're going to use the metallic waxes now. So for this one, I'm going to look for colors with always pumpkin. For example, Firebird, it's a good choice. Or Aged Brass would be a good choice. Or Copper, of course. These are the colors that are going to go nicely with our metallic. <laughs> so as far as I can see, and probably we'll start with the Firebird and then we will see what happens. Um, I want the elements to be nicely visible. So of course I will wax the embellishments and then the bottom of the pumpkin as well. The easier way to do it is uh, to take the brush. And to take a bit of the wax. And of course we can start from the place which is safe. So from the bottom, Firebird, it's like ultimate color for the magical pumpkin. So if you're afraid that you're going to do too much, you can start from the bottom of the pumpkin, of course. And then don't be afraid to blend. We are going to blend the color. So it's a natural transition from the wax to the metallic flakes. So overlapping the flakes a little bit. Mmm, the smell is so yummy. Firebird is my idea for that pumpkin. And of course, I'm going to add more. This is like the first layer we are going to do. <laughs> Again, another problem child, as you said. And does happen. But it's okay. I will hold it with my finger. And then... We're going to do the waxing. And that is going to be a really lovely look to start with. You can see how this black is now our shadow, our natural shadow. 
around the composition and how this is nicely blending one into another. So you can easily combine the metallic flakes and waxes if you want to, just giving you the idea that this is possible and this is really cool technique to use in your projects. It's really up to you how much of the metallic you would like to add. I'm adding first one, it's like the first layer. And of course, the problematic one is here as well. So I'm going to paint it with gesso and dry. And then I will come back to it when, once the wax is set. Uh, I'm going to let it sit for five to 10 minutes so my colors are not going to blend too much. It's just going to be easier to get the result I love. So this is what we have so far. Yes, of course, I can tell you why they are now in the tubes instead of boxes. It was the decision we had to make uh, because of the uh, situation that we had with the retailers. They were asking us to extend the shelf life of the product and to make sure that we can really get any cross-contamination of the product as well because people were afraid it's going to be a problem. So the only way to avoid cross-contamination is to put product in the tube so you can't touch it with your finger. And after discussing with the lab and making sure that everything is going to be done the best possible way for the customers, we agreed it's just going to be better. And of course, with the application, you can put it on the palette and then pick up just a small amount as well. This is one of the advantages people say. For me, the most important is the shelf life is longer, so people are going to be more satisfied with the product. And that's how it works. So this is our first step here. Can you clean up the wax off with the brushes? Yes, of course. And the easiest way to do that is to use hot soap, uh, hot water and soap. And I'm going to use hot water and soap to clean my fingers because now here I would like to use silver. So I can see a small problem. <laughs> Uh, give me a second. <laughs> so I can touch my other pumpkin without making the color orange by accident. to go from the top to the bottom. We blend from silver to this shiny silver. So this one is waiting for us to, um, well, for this to dry a little bit. So the wax is going to set. Wax is not really uh, mixing with each other that easily, but if it's very fresh, it may happen. So if I would like to add some details on the top of that pumpkin, I would need to uh, wait, so for me five, ten minutes. In that time, I can work on this one. Okay, let's take another brush. Don't take the same color, uh, don't take the same dirty brush to apply two different colors of metallic because they're going to mix on the brush and you won't like it. So instead, try to find another brush or to clean it before. This is the one that I have for silver color, apparently. Let me find silver. Here's old silver, which I really love. Oh, here's even more of the silver in the tin. This is very dry, very old. So I'm going to 
put that on the top so it's going to be more creamy. I can use it as a palette now. If you want to revive your old uh, old wax, you can try to do that uh, by adding the same medium as you add to your oil paints. So, for example, uh, turpentine or any kind of product that is exchangeable with turpentine. It all depends on the... Um, what is available in your country. Some people don't like the turpentine smell. So now you can see what happens, right? So if you have something that is exchangeable with the turpentine, go for it. Now, here we go more carefully. We don't want to lose the detail. So I'm just going with the delicate touches of the wax and I remove excess from the brush. So we are trying to touch the tops. So you can see this natural transition from the wax to the shiny, shiny metallic flake. Really cool effect. Very hard to compare with anything else. So I really recommend trying that in the future if you like this kind of effects, of course. I will try to put my finger in here in a moment or a thinner brush. This is just amazing. Look at that. So pretty. I got excited with my own project again, so, <laughs> you know. It's good to be nice to yourself. Uh, yes, I intend to touch the crystal flowers with a little bit of the paint, but not too much. So I didn't really change the color because I would like them to be a little bit silvery rusty. So look, I can now touch them a little bit with silver. But I really like the original color and I was thinking it's going with my original idea. That's why I didn't paint them too carefully. I have to tell you that. That, yeah, I was planning to get them painted with acrylics a little bit. Okay, so that looks almost finished. I'm just checking for the places that I could miss. And now, of course, the cogs. The ones that were partly <laughs> covers with, covered with the flake. Now you can also cover with the wax. Look how easy it is. Now here I have to take something smaller. There's no way I can get there with the big brush. Let's try this one. Yeah, that will do. Everybody coming late. <laughs> Hello Vasilis, good to see you. Great to see so many of my patrons and ambassadors here today. You are lovely people. Thank you for the support. Continuous support and continuous work with my products as well. Thank you. Thank you for that. Let's put a little bit more in here for nicer blending. I hope you can see it really well, but I love the look. We have now this dark shadow from the gesso, and now we have the uh, silver, which is, you know, touching the tops. And again, to make sure the result is going to be the best, I let it to sit for a moment. And here I'm going to touch with a tiny bit of the silver on my, with my finger, to do a little bit of the highlights here and there, you know, just to help to show the detail. So it's going to be 
a little bit more visible. Silver is very useful color because of course it's a great background, but also it can go with different kinds of coppers and golds as the color that is going to give you the contrast. And here <laughs> I can touch the stem and I can do a little bit of the highlight to show the shape of the pumpkin a little bit more. See what I'm doing? I'm uh, trying to highlight the natural look of the pumpkin. So instead of adding shadows, I'm adding highlights. And perfection is not needed. It is just a tiny bit of the delicate touch. This is, yes, this is paper, paper mache. Yeah, exactly. It's a, so the colors of the little pumpkin, they're quite fun. It's almost finished, but we can add some touches and textures. For example, I would add a bit of splatters of the red metallic to it to make it look a little bit more funky. And you can just splatter or you can let it drip. And I will use the dripping technique, of course, because I love it, which means I'm going to take a bit of that red, place it in some parts and then let it flow with the water. And it's going to add nice finishing touch as well. <coughs> Please excuse me. I think that was metallic flake. See? It's going to give us really cool touch. Let's see how it's going to be after drying, of course. But I think we need a little bit more here. And a little bit more here. If you want to make the shadows darker, of course, you can go with the darker paint. I will show you that in a moment as well. But first, let's focus on the effect. It's going to add a touch of grunginess and a red wine paint, which I'm using. This is a red wine color from Metallics. It's beautiful red shade that is uh, slightly going into pink as well, so very warm and very nice looking color. almost finished I'm just going to make the shadows darker and add some really random splatters but I want to put this silver one away so it's not going to get red <laughs> stay there stay in safe distance Yeah, it goes perfect with the colors. I agree. We can, of course, add some shiny touches with glitter or whatever else you like. It's all up to you. I'm just going to go with a little bit of the splatters. I don't want to do exactly the same things on both, so I'm giving you some variations, of course. Let's dry it before I'm going to add the shadows as well. Fun, very, very fun. Yeah, this is perfect effect. Honestly, people sometimes are afraid of red, but look how natural it is. And these little silver highlights are adding a lovely touch. OK, 
Tadam! Now, <clears throat> a bit. If you'd like to get the shadows darker, you can use watered down gesso or, um, for example, black liquid acrylic. Because we have quite a lot of gesso here, I can use that on the palette, a bit of the gesso. Not too much, as you can see. <laughs> this red is red wine. Like, you know, wine from the bottle. Let me show you. Red wine. Okay. And now, with this black color, you can make some of the shadows more visible. In case if you lost something, you can now bring it back. And because we're doing that on the wax, it's never going to be too much because it's never going to stick really. Yeah. It just wants to drip. And what you can do, you can even play a little bit with that. And add a little bit of these <laughs> marks in the deeper parts of the pumpkin. You can use the heat gun to make the traces of the water just when you want them. You can soften that with your finger. Very simple technique, but very useful if you feel that your project is tiny bit too colorful, so you can put it back in place. See? And now we are going to go to the silver pumpkin and we're going to make it look amazing. And this one is going to dry in the meantime. With all the grand, lovely grunginess happening here. So maybe we'll decide to add some of the glitter on it. Wow, love it, love it. So just a quick drying. Of course, I will try to take photos. So you're going to see the uh, finished results on my Instagram account as well. So you can see, you know, the details of it because it's really hard to show it now on the camera. But of course, we are going to go into that. Well, one more thing I wanted to do, it was playing with this little thingy to make it more like a tendril, real tendril. We. <laughs> I think it's very successful alteration. Yep. And now we put it in the safe place to dry. And <laughs> Now it's time to play with the silver one. And the silver one is going to get a touch of the orange and red as well. So it's going to be good match to the smaller one, but a little bit different angle. So it's going to be more silver and uh, less orange, while the small one will be more orange, less silver. <laughs> Treasure, oh, thank you. So let's do the same thing. First of all, let's look for the colors. I will keep the red wine. I have flame, which is absolutely lovely color. So let's see what is our color inspiration, right? Just drips, not too much, right? Uh, maybe a bit of Sparks golden, uh, go dragon's eye, so the gold color. We'll see what happens. And then, of course, we can always add some lovely splatters and other effects. And I also have my secret weapons here, such as glitters, glass glitters. But 
but also things such as jewel effect paste, which I really wanted to dab on this one a little bit. Um, here we don't have too much space left, you know, but this one is bigger. Ready? <laughs> Let's try the same thing. Let's go with the oranges and reds first to give it this lovely touch. It's going to drip from the top and then we can combine it with this or maybe gold. We'll see what happens. Now, bigger brush because it's a bigger project. I will find something more suitable. This one. <laughs> so, what we were talking about, <laughs> we were talking about adding the color, right? It's a scary moment for some people, but we want really, we want to drip it. So it's good to start with quite a lot of paint. And if you're afraid, you can go with the one color first and then you can go to second after drying. So one color is going to be permanent and then the second is going to go together with that. So you can see I'm starting with the flame. This is this color. It's a beautiful fire orange color. <laughs> and as before, I'm adding that on the top. And I will let the color drip. I'm just trying to find the position where you can see exactly what I'm doing. The paste will go later because it's texture paste, so we would like to see this texture. So we go all the way around. We can now also put part of that on the crystal flowers. And if you're not sure if it's enough, it's always a good idea to do it in steps. So add a little bit, dry it, add more, dry it. Basically it looks like a mess now. But it's really going to look so much better when it's dry. The trick is it doesn't really stick that nicely to the wax so you will get this kind of random looking effects which are absolutely lovely and then you are able to get this uh, very unique look so it's really worth trying and then after adding finishing touches with uh, extra shadow it looks amazing this darker red is called red wine and the lighter red is called flame. Multitasking as well, good thing. Let's have a look. Lovely. Oh my God, it's lovely. We have this orange drip going all the way down. This is what I wanted. I'm going to add a little bit of the red one together. And then we can do the cleanup and the highlights and the, well, not really the highlights, the cleanup and the shadows. So let's add a little bit of this red. So it's going to be not just one tone, but two tones instead. More of that.
and again dry. This is the good moment to ask questions because I don't have to watch my project so badly. <laughs> If you have any questions about that, <laughs> that's really interesting, Tommy. <laughs> it looks very messy now, but I'm planning to touch it with the wax again with my finger. So the highlights are going to be really nicely visible. So don't be afraid. What's your favorite brown? Well, this is a tricky question, but I have to tell you my favorite brown is uh, Burnt Sienna from Liquid Acrylics. I use it in crazy amounts because it's just so very similar to natural golden brown of the tea stain. And it's very hard to stop myself when I do so. <laughs> so this is my favorite brown color. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> well, I knew it's going to be nice, but I didn't expect it's going to be so nice. It's coming, it's coming. So you can have a look from different angles now. This one, thank you. I'm just drying and showing you what is happening here how this one is changing it's metallic on the top of metallic and it's oh my god instant perfection also I'm finding the places which were collecting water and now I can just blow dry it perfectly So before we are going to clean it up and add the texture, I will add the shadows first. Because a bit of this black is lost. So you know already how you can do it. You can take your uh, brush and add a little bit of water down, just so. So in some parts, if you want to, you can bring back the darker tones. a little bit too watered down it's really up to you how much you would like to add i like quite like dark so i'm adding that back in some of the places and of course we will let it drip You can help with your finger if you want to. <laughs> if it's too much, you can always pick up with the paper towel or the baby wipe. This is not a problem. We dry and then we add finishing touches. Yeah, it's the kind of boring thing when you have to dry it, but this is the reality. If you want to go fast, you have to dry it bit by bit. I love how brave you were with the red. It inspires me. Oh, I'm not afraid of red. It's really friendly color. It's really, really lovely, especially for the uh, autumn season. 
it's very hard to go wrong with this color. And with silver, it's perfect combination. I'm trying to dry from different angles. And then we start working on the cleanup. First, close the paint. I spilled paint today already, so it's enough. I closed the flame. This was this orange, orange, beautiful, deep orange color. And I closed the red wine, which was the second tone. You can see now how beautifully and grungy these drips are on the metallic flakes, for example, here. So this is all a little bit wet still in that part, but I'm just checking. We got this effect easily. <laughs> oh, you're embracing orange. Well, orange is not so easy color for me, but I always try to imagine it is rust. So it's helpful. Now, I clean up that space, so we can now work on the touches. So first of all, uh, I bring back the uh, silver wax to show more of the details again. And now I'm going to add a little bit of aged brass, which is yellowish, like more like steampunk color, especially for the cogs. I would like to see that. So I'm going to add this one after. And then we're going to add our special jewel crushed amber effect paste. So first of all, with the silver. <laughs> yeah. Sure. If you can, try to send the photos. Now, cleaning up, right? So I'm touching the tops. Again, showing the details a bit better. First of all, you can do it on the drips, on the pebbles. So whatever was taken with our paint, now you can bring back. I'm using the finger because it's much easier now to feel where you are touching. You can see I'm trying to color that back. So let's say the colors stay mostly in the shadows. And embellishments, they get more of the metallic silver touch. So if it was too grungy for you, this is your chance to control the situation again. So this wax is now coming back and showing the details. And I will check on my drips, of course. I would like to have my drips silver. See how pretty it is here? Yeah, the drip is silver. And now to break that silver and red, I will add a little bit of this brass, which is warmer tone. You can see it on my skin. <laughs> You'll be making a pumpkin. Perfect. Look, I would like to add more steampunkish touch to it. So the cogs, they are getting more warmer metallic look. And of course, this is up to you how far you would like to go. I'm going to add a bit of that brass in selected places. For example, on the leaf, on the flower. To make it a little bit more interesting. And of course, the gears again. Let's 
so they're a little bit more visible. For example, this one with the flower on the side of the leaf. You know, we're not trying to keep everything in one color because it's getting boring. So that's why I'm trying to give it more of the dimension, adding another tone, for example, on the pebbles. And now, once it is done and we are happy, oh, one more, haha, <laughs> sorry, I forgot about you, but no worries, we are here, you are fine. Now we can play with the textures. Not too much, just to add extra shiny kick. It's really hard to see the whole pumpkin <laughs> from this angle, so I really appreciate that you are patient with me, but I promise I will take the best possible photos to show you the final look of the project. So that is it, and now. If you would like to get extra shine, we can play with a bit of the crushed jewel paste, or you can work with glitter as well. This is perfect color. And we can add it in some selected parts. Just dabbing for extra texture and shine. For example, around the cogs as well. This has a lot of texture and glitter in it. So if you want to, you can use it as another element in your composition. It also is water-based, so if you want to make it a little bit watered down, you can. So it really looks like the cogs are getting out of the pumpkin and this is the pumpkin inside getting out as well. If you want to use your imagination that way. I love it. I have to tell you, I love it. I'm really thinking, should I add some glitter? But if yes, that will be just a bit of the pale gold glitter. I've got two shades of glitter and I think this one is more brass color so I can add just in selected places maybe on the flower using soft gel or something similar oh. it's very good glue by the way as you can see so 
not so easy to open when you forget to clean the edge of course I'm looking for the clean brush but that may be a challenge let's see maybe inside of the flowers just to make them look a little bit more special I don't want to go too far because we have quite a lot of shine happening but for a nice balance we can also sprinkle a touch of glitter yeah this one what color is in the glitter and the crushed amber well the truth is this is more than one this is combination of the gold and orange <laughs> so there are two colors of that glitter in the um, in this product and there's also kind of like the natural stone so that's why we have the result and um I have to tell you, it is really like natural effect. So, tapping off the excess. And now, with the clean brush, removing the extras. So, it's not going to be too much. In case if it's too much, you can always touch up with, uh, where is this paste? Where's my paste? Oh, here. Jewel paste again. And this way we came to the glittery, shiny, metallic perfection. <laughs> Let's look at both of them together so we can see if they work as a set. I think they should, but just in case we still have the time to change it a little bit. What I can do if I feel this is too much, I can always add a little bit of black again in the parts that are annoying like here I lost the dimension look I can always go again like this is no problem I'm just saying that if you feel like ah, too much glitter it is possible yep this is up to you some people prefer more shiny some people prefer less shiny and apparently I'm the person who likes black color <sighs> two of them together um yeah more orange baby and very large silver one yeah it's perfect for the pumpkin this this is just amazing and i'm very glad that i wanted to use it today because it is really cool and I'm thinking about adding black in here to see what happens. Hmm, I may. But now it's just playing and playing and to see what happens, right? I don't want you to watch me fiddling the details forever. I will just show you that in the different angle so you can see it when I hold it in my hand, okay? Ugh. Oh, you can see my studio now. Ah, of course. <laughs> because it doesn't recognize I'm touching the screen with my finger. So, the small one. <laughs> the small one is easier to see when I hold it, I guess. Combination of Firebird and Golden and Copper metallic flakes so you get this unique shine 
and then you get the leaves and all the elements there like that mm -hmm. and now the big one the big one looks like this so from the side it's still mostly silver and you can only see the drips of different kinds and the color is slightly more steampunk uh, on the cogs right but then look from the top brings much more color so maybe this is the, the best angle i'm trying to show you you know how it is in real life this is the problem with 3d projects when you have the top camera view it's not really easy to say what exactly is uh, the 3d look because you only look from that side so i'm just going to turn it around for you so you can see how it was done I had great time making these and I really probably will add a little bit of shadow around the cogs. Dziękuję. <laughs> and it's going to be my uh, decoration for the season. I will probably put it somewhere in my dining room, I guess. Of course, it's permanent effect. After drying properly, it's all going to get permanent and you will be able to clean it with the wet uh, wipe or a brush it all depends what you use for cleaning and of course this is interactive as well because all these you can style in a different way and of course you can think about making similar projects and add some like a little sentiment on it you know like the season's greeting no season greetings is for christmas uh, like a uh, happy autumn or happy halloween <laughs> so this way you know, it's kind of random drip, but because of that, it really brings the idea that maybe it's like the juice coming from out from the pumpkin dripping all the way, right? And it's also in a grungy way. So this is not like typical pumpkin uh, everybody would uh, have on the table, I guess, but it's my pumpkin and I'm absolutely happy to have them. The set like that quite cute and as you can see combination of this super silver shine is really almost like mirror here you can see that and then the waxing is really nice and it's the same here there are some parts which are extremely shiny and then some parts which are more metallic metallic so i hope you enjoyed that have you got any questions because you know this is quite a long process i knew it's going to take time especially when you make two but i could switch between a small one and the big one when we had the time for drying and i would love to know what you think if you like the video give me the thumb up please because it's helpful of course it's going to be more visible and easier to discover uh, for people and share it with your friends and if you have online shop if you are the retailer of course you can use that as an inspiration for your clients you can make similar projects with them we do it for you and i hope you are going to get inspired and uh, of course the color combination it's optional but i made it the way i like it <laughs> and and uh, this kind of video when i talk to you about everything when i can show you the project step by step when we can interact it's very valuable for me i really mean it i love live classes like that and uh, it's much easier for me to create like this than just creating myself and making a video <laughs> so i hope that was inspiring and just to give you a little heads up this week I'm going to release something new and unusual. This is an online event you can sign up for. And this is not really focused on the project project, but it is focused on your well-being as an artist. Um, it's focused on boosting our energy, clearing up the space in our heads, finding time for the art. This is like transformational process. I went through myself a couple of times and I turn it into one week 
long event when you do small steps with me every day and then we finally meet and we also create a project with intention. So it's something very special. I called it Creativity Whispering and it's part one out of four. And this is something that is a very unique online class. I didn't see anything like that done yet. I used all my special powers to create it and I'm hoping you're going to stay tuned and of course join because that is something very uh, different, I think. So if you think that you may need a boost of energy, you'd like to learn some good creative habits and you feel you'd like to listen to your inner voice a little bit better, um, this Creativity Whispering series of classes is surely something for you. And the first one is, uh, the name is Make Room for Your Voice. And it's really focused on preparing us for closing the old chapter and opening the new one. Because I'm not sure if you know, but in Celtic calendar, uh, it's Halloween. So the Samhain is the time when you, um, when it's the end of the year and the beginning of the new one. <laughs> so I think, oh, wait, why not? Thank you so much, Missy Lulu, for the donation. Thank you so much for doing that. So, guys, um, <laughs> what can I say? Tips like that, they're always, always welcome. Thank you, thank you. Huge hearts, hearts in a Korean way, hearts and hearts for you. <laughs> thank you for doing that. I hope that was giving you some ideas for the projects these pumpkins maybe anything else you can make bottles like that you can make boxes like that and of course for the autumn season the glitter and the orange and red tones are natural choice but you can i'm sure imagine that done with very different techniques as well like different color palettes as well so stay tuned and watch on my social media for the new uh, online workshop or event sign up and this is live event which means we go through that together so that is something that you can um do now of course you can rewatch later as well but i'm going to reveal the details early next week so it's going to be really really something else and i hope a lot of you will join because it's going to be very very beneficial for you <laughs> so i keep moving that so you have a look you know it's like Thank you. Yes, Denise, it is something amazing. I I used all my knowledge and the new knowledge that I got, because I'm not sure if you know, but I went for classes to uh, get some uh, coaching skills as well. And I, they are typically focused on softer side of the people, more on the creativity side. I was looking for the class uh, that is going to give me good tools to work with people who are more, hmm, I would say, creative orientated, artful. <laughs> so I spent eight days, so 85 hours to get certificate in that as well. So come on, let me show you what I've learned. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Tommy is always having really funny comments and I missed one which was really funny I wanted to read uh, let me go uwielbiam twoje szaleństwo twórcze dlatego martwiłam się, że ostygniesz po ogrodzie Louvre nie, ja nigdy to nie tutaj organizacja to nie ten adres so guys uh, let me take photos of these for you. <laughs> Thank you, Missy. And, and it was really fun. I met a lot of people from different professions during that course as well. So we also interact with each other and we learned, uh, well, not that much, a lot of people, eight people. Uh, so we interact with each other, we inspire each other as well. But I really wanted to get more skills to answer to my students' needs. So when they ask me questions, where to find inspiration? How can I get out of the creative block? What can I do to feel better in my studio? Um, I'm not sure what is happening, but I think I'm burning out. So I know how to help them. I know what to do. Uh, instead of just giving them easy tips, I have like more organized knowledge now. 
and I did it because I really care and I really wanted to be helpful. So <laughs> some of my patrons could see a bit of my knowledge already. I was making a special uh, live stream about intuitive collage and they loved and they loved it. So uh, <laughs> so guys, thank you so much for watching. Share this video with your friends. Maybe invite your friends to create some uh, autumn decorations. You can use some of these ideas, of course. Color palettes, the co combination of the metallic flakes and wax. If you don't have wax, you can use the metallic acrylic paint in a similar way. Um, you can use the idea of uh, adding the textures, glitters, just you know, playing with the whole composition. You could see how this one was done and how this one was done. I think they are a very nice set now. I still have one small pumpkin, but I don't know what to do with it. Maybe next time. And I really want to thank from the bottom of my heart uh, to all of you coming here. And especially I want to thank, send thanks to my patrons who are my, uh, well, special um, sponsors. They help me to stay creative, to stay at home and make art. And through that subscription, uh, they of course get access to the secret and exclusive videos with classes. But I think what they do is amazing because uh, with their subscription, which is starting at on five euro, and on 10 euro, you get really tons of stuff such as videos and so on. They help me be full-time artist and designer and coach and teacher and all of that. And thanks to that, I can stay here and do my job for all of you. Also making videos like that for you to enjoy. So huge thanks to my patrons. You make the magic happen. Surely you make my life, my life, my magic of my life happen. So thank you. Thank you for watching. Make art, make some art. Whenever you feel like you can find the time to make at least a small, small thingy because that makes you feel better. Thank you. <laughs> good night and have a good rest of your day, depending where you are. Thanks. I will be cleaning now and I will be hoovering the metallic flakes and uh, probably maybe adding a little bit of the shadow to the pumpkin. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.